We're back. Hi, everybody. We're back. These are the vetoes for the second semi-final between Marsman and Euthermal. Uh, these are two beasts of the Dutch Starcraft scene. I'm going to go over the other, otherwise we're going to get feedback. All right. Uh, you go ahead and start. It's going to be a, to a coin toss first. Oh, we've already done it. Okay, so Mark can start. Okay, Parasite is out. And Marsman can veto the second map. Stasis. All right, so it leaves five's map for this best five maps for the best of five. And Mark chooses Kairos, is that Station? Junction. Junction, map one. No names. Cerulean Fall, map number two. Port Alexander, map number three. And then it's Blue Shift and Automaton. These are the vetoes. Congratulations, guys. You did it. <laughs> Have fun playing the second semifinal. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to the casters. These are uh, Thalandros and Mjolki sitting ready to cast the semifinals. Have fun, guys. Oh, and by the way, for the people in here, uh, we decided to sell those posters with all the autographs of the players. These are unique posters. Wow. Never in the future of the Dutch StarCraft scene will there ever be a poster like this with 12 autographs from the best StarCraft players of this time, including Mela, right? So it, all right, including Mela. There we go. <laughs> of course, Mela will be back next year, but, you know... Uh, Bring the hype and such. So um, we thought maybe 10 euros if we sell those posters. There are eight of them. We can pay for food for our crew. So that's pretty good. So um, these are there. Uh, casters, back to you. Have fun casting the semifinals. Frank, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah man. Anyway, I want amigos, one of those posters. Amigos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want those posters, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> I do. For 10 euros or more. Maybe we should yeah. put them up on like eBay. We can start bidding. Oh, that would be great. I think it would go That's right That's a money-making like business. Yeah. I don't think you would need to fund the DSL for like another five years. Could be a, could be a business model. Uh, Signed right? by the one and only Talandros. <laughs> well, <laughs> at that point, you don't even have to work for the rest of your life, I Exactly. Think. No, um, we are going into a game of two very famous players that do have their names signed on those posters. And that those players are Euthermal and Marsman. They've just done their vetoes. They're getting ready. And uh, very, very soon we'll be going into the first, very first game of this semifinals. Are you excited? This is the second semifinals I already. Am. We're almost done. It's gonna be great. I'm very hyped. Are you hi more hyped for this or more hyped for whoever plays Harston? I'm more hyped for whoever plays Harston. What, what, what if Marsman upsets Mark? Do you think that's gonna be the best series then? Oh, In a okay. way, that would be great because that would be the upset right. of the century. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, if he beats Mark, if he beats Mark, and then he beats Harstam, that would be even. I don't know. It, it, the finals is supposed to be more hype, right? But it, it depends on the series. This is a best of five, just like the previous uh, series, and the finals is a best of seven, right? Yeah. So we're gonna have a very, very long finals compared to all the other games uh, today, which have been a best of three up until the semis. So uh, yeah. Let's get right into it. Oh, Seems we're the players into the game. are saying good luck, have fun, which usually means the game's about to start. It usually does. I mean, some people are just that mannered. They just say it whenever. Good luck, have fun. I just say it like whenever I wake up and I meet someone for the first time or I, I text someone. Good luck, have fun. Being on Tinder, swiping <laughs> right, you got your match. <laughs> good luck, have fun, babe. <laughs> well, I mean, you can say good luck before the swipe, before the match, though, then, right? Yeah. Good luck to yourself, have fun. After the swipe. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. All right, loading into the game now, guys. In the 5 o'clock position, we have the blue Protoss player. Is he going to make it to the finals? It's Marsman. Come on, some cheering is appreciated, guys. Some hype, maybe. <laughs> In the top left corner of this map, we have our Red Terran player playing for Team Liquid. It's Euthermal! There we go. That's better. That's better. He even has his hoodie on, I saw. That means it's serious. That it's thing is on. chill. Well, if he's taking it off, then it's serious business. <laughs> or he's just hot. Yeah, but it's, it's still serious business. It's actually not that warm in the, in the venue. It's actually quite chill. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good time. Usually uh, in like gaming rooms, it's very, very like very warm. But it, this is a very big venue, I guess. So it's not that bad. Esports Game Arena is where the tournament is being held, guys. I'm not sure how much that has been plugged yet, but it's a really cool venue. 
if you're in the area and you want to have go to like a, a little gaming spot, they have a lot of PlayStations here, PCs, and of course StarCraft tournaments among others. So uh, check it out if you're uh, in the area. And if you want to meet some new people or some friends, there's quite a few people in the arena. Yeah, yeah, and there's enough place to go with your friends as well. Yeah. Right, so we see this probe now entering um, at Euthermal's base, and I mean, not seeing too much out of the ordinary. Not gonna go for all that proxy uh, cheekiness that uh, Jorks uh, did in the previous series. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that was Bart. a nice It doesn't really matter, but. <laughs> I mean, it's cheeky. Nice touch. It's a nice touch. Um, we see you next coming up on Marsman. I don't think Marsman's gonna play two out of the uh, standard in the first game at least, because I think he wants to feel Euthermal out. Maybe. Euthermal's not that confident, right? So in, in TVP. Yeah. So maybe he can like if he can eke out a macro here, that's like gonna put him on a massive like foot ahead in terms of like mentally being prepared for the next games. So you think Marsman can mind game him out of some games? Um well I think I think I think if Marsman wins the first game somehow, I think that can get into Mark's head. At the same time, Mark's ha Mark has so much tournament experience, it might not phase him, right? Yeah, that's true. But he is a fairly mental player, so it's 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 mental. hard. Mental. <laughs> His games are also pretty mental. <laughs> <laughs> um, the adept's gonna try to chase the reaper away. Obviously, he's gonna be a bit slower, so hard. He's gonna get. I don't expect him to get. get yeah, I don't expect him to. He's Shouldn't happen, right? Probably gonna lose his reaper, though. Whoa, that was really nice, Mike. That was two hundred IQ plays. That that's one. At <laughs> least. <laughs> He can watch Rick and Morty. <laughs> he can, he can. He shoot. You all shoot. Well, only if you have 200 IQ, otherwise you don't understand us. That's, that's the joke. You have to have 200 IQ to watch. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but yeah. not everyone has 200 IQ. Yeah, but everyone <laughs> needs. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, fairly stand up player. Actually, we see something that DJ. Oh, I, I've cast a lot of DJ today, so I'm going to refer to that a bit. But he did not play very Widowmine heavy, and Mark really does like that, you thermal. So. We've already seen, this is already his second Widowmine, I think. He's going to finish up a Starport, so I think he's going to go for a little bit of a Marine Mind Drop. Yeah. Fairly standard play from the Terran, but something that not everyone does. So, yeah. Second Mine almost uh, almost there. Probably going to load it up into an effect when, it, when it's done, but we'll have to see. Second Blink Rax on the way on as well. Yeah, second Rax. Just fairly standard play from, from the Thermal. But we're getting a Chrono Blink out from Marsman. Which actually, coincidentally, is kind of a good counter to this drop around. <laughs> it is. It's not going to be finished before the drop gets there, but in the future. It has a very good potential against this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's, I mean, and it's very pretty expensive to get in the early game, so you need it to be worth it, right? You need to have like some sense of security because of it, or you need to be able to do a, a bit of damage, um, which he might do. We're seeing a robo follow up. Nothing out of the ordinary there either. Getting sending a probe to his third. Just fairly standard. As I said, Marshman's not really trying out too much here. I, think. I don't think he wants to. Actually, is that probe going to make a third? It would be early. But oh, but the probe saw yep. the medevac. And that's important because there's three Winnemines in there. And five Stalkers can definitely five take out that one medevac. Okay, not doing Blink almost finished now. So he can definitely use that in his next defense. And uh, Mark's just gearing up for a good mid-game. He's getting, uh, I keep saying Mark, so you say you're thermal, but uh, he's getting plus one uh, and stim. attack and stim and everything, right? Yep. Two more mines, I think. Yeah, no, that's a plighty pose. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I really needed my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we see a good split there from Mark, only getting those there's two probes. He has that one Widowmine. Does he know that? Yeah, he yes, he does. All right, that's very, very good. But the he's boost... He's getting one more Widowmine, though. Yeah, I mean, if Marsman is on top of this, Mark will never, <laughs> Euthermal will never be able to do any significant damage with this, right? He's he killed did a Stalker. Get two probes and a Stalker with it, though. Yeah, but Which he lost two mines. He lost two mines. So it's not yeah. great. It's not great, but it's not bad. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, I mean, it, you know, it's not that big of a commitment, so it's not the biggest of deals. Marsman is on top of it, like he should, and uh, it, didn't, it didn't, you know, cause him any massive losses or whatever. Thermal Lance just started oh. for the Protoss player. That means the Runic Space also completed. We're going to see some fairly quick uh, Colossi soon. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think it's pretty, yeah. It could be a good call for him. A two base Colossus. Yeah. Oh, cheeky. Right. The Forge's almost uh, finishing up now as well. Probably going to start plus one right away. He's going to be a bit behind in upgrades. 
But I don't think that's too out of the ordinary in this matchup. I think Terran... Ooh, oh, okay. that's not very good. Those five stars have been quite annoying. Uh, blocking uh, that drop for like a little bit and now getting it just completely dead. I think there's four Widowmines in there as well. Okay, we see that. Yeah, there's four Widowmines. So he's going to try again. Uh, fi probably see the third. A little bit of harassment here from the Protoss player, but with Blink, you shouldn't really lose any stalkers ever. It was close. Oh, he's going to lose those though. That sets him back a bit. Not a lot, though. It's two stalkers. It's not the biggest of deals. I mean, okay, so here Still we see... Good for you don't yeah, yeah, for sure. It's looking good for him if he can hold this on, though, because he is definitely down in supply, and most of that is army. So he needs to hold on. His Colossi are not out yet. He doesn't have Thermal Lance finished. And his Widowmines are going to stop mining from that third for quite a bit. Okay, the first Colossus has now finished. The second one is almost out. But the p like Terran has this potential to pull you apart as Protoss player, and 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 Colossi really reminds me of that like Wings of Liberty era where that's what you had to do as Terran, right? You had to pull the pull the Protoss to all quarters of their bases so that Colossi could never really fight with a big army. That's what Merc's kind of doing now right now with the Widowmines and the drops in the in the bottom left. Actually, that's a big drop. That's a very good drop by you, Thermal there. It's gonna get a lot. Yeah, it might. yeah, the Protoss army is completely out of range. Actually, that's a <laughs> really that good force field. Forcing all the Venomax to go because he can't really go anywhere with those two Colossi there. That was, I think that was really, really well done because if he moved those Stalkers there as well, then he wouldn't be able to get the Medivac. It was really, it was a really good defense. But he rejected a lot of mining time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. With that Widow Mine. And now we see that coming to fruition where Euthermal is now uh, a good 25 supply ahead, right? So... That's really going to come into play later when Euthermal's about to max out, Marsman isn't, and he's going to force an engagement because Euthermal can do that in that, in that scenario. Um, both players now still just teching up, and uh, we see Euthermal moving out again, but I think this time he's actually going to go for a push because with those Liberators, you can actually force uh, an engagement against the Colossi, right? Without Liberators, it's really hard, but with Liberators or Vikings or any type of unit that can actually shoot, at Colossi, it's, it's hard. And it's really hard to engage in into Liberators. Yeah. When you set them up like that, for example. And now he's got free reign over the natural, pretty much. There's only one Colossus there. He's going to snipe it with Marines, whatever. He, it's, it's okay. Still keeping some buyout back there. And this is, oh man, getting all the sentries right away. This is looking bad for Marsman. Really, really bad. Very good play by you, Thermal. But those mines aren't doing much, no. but it doesn't matter. <laughs> GG. GG, that's it. Game number one goes to Euthermal, as expected. The hoodie's still on. <laughs> oh, he has his A game phase on. The focus. Yep, yep. He's focused. Full oh, he's stretching focus. now. There we go. That's all he needed. Gets a good bit of water in him. Don't want to be. Don't want to be dehydrated during uh, a StarCraft tournament. That's no. a really bad thing. You know, you know your performance. I'm not sure if it's mental performance as well, but your perfor your physical performance drops like 20% if you're even slightly dehydrated. If you have like dry lips, that means you're dehydrated. You need to always be drinking water. Well, like like two liters a day or something like. Don't forget, water. guys. You need to drink enough. Yes. Life. Always drink enough. Water, that is. <laughs> I was about to say, you need to disclaim that, because otherwise people are going to drink vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking vodka all day. It's not home story, cup. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, life tips at the DSCL uh, finals. I mean, who knew? No, but I, I, I would actually be interested to see if, like, your brain also starts functioning less fast and less accurately and less well, if you're... How much that is if you're dehydrated. Because I know physically... You don't, you might not feel it, but you're actually performing a lot worse if you don't drink. Uh, yeah, I like can within feel a couple it right hours. Now. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a little <laughs> bit of water to drink if you <laughs> don't mind, guys. Well, you just you're just having like setting a good example. I think that's good. Yeah. Or that could be vodka. I mean, you <laughs> might not be telling. It's not anyone. vodka. Believe me. Chug Trust it. me. Chug it. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> All right. Game number two on this is a uh, uh, cerulean fall. Um, I have the the maps here in front of me. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't have the <laughs> analytical complexity to be able to analyze this completely. But map number three is Port Alexander. Four is gonna be blue shift and five out of mana. Yeah, it is. So uh, I, it's it's the question is, are we even gonna go there with the thermal being fairly dominant that first game? But uh, yeah, 
we're about to roll into early fall first, so I'll introduce the player in the top right. In the top right, we have our blue Protoss player playing for MCON. It's Marsman! <laughs> Thanks, Frank. <laughs> and <laughs> in the bottom left corner, <laughs> his opponent, the Red Terran, winner of many DSCL tournaments so far. It is you, Thermo! He's also 1 0 up against Marsman. Awesome. He's feeling good. Yep. He's feeling fine. Well, I don't know. If he's dehydrated, he might not be feeling fine. I don't know. Don't <laughs> forget, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you need to drink it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, did you know that Ethermo actually won his IAM when he was feeling, when he wasn't feeling that yeah. good at all? Like, that's insane. It's, it's all in your head. It's all yeah. in your head. Um, yeah, we see a fairly solid opening so far. I mean, we're one minute, one minute into the game. Really, let, let's talk about the maps here th real quick then. Map 3 is Port Alexander, which is a new map as well. Yeah. Right? 4 is going to be Blue Shift. 5 is going to be Automaton. Um, Blue Shift, obviously. Is it Automaton or Automaton or Automaton or. Everybody says it differently. Yeah, that's. It's <laughs> probably why they called it that way. What is it? Automaton. Automaton. That sounds okay. so British. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, isn't all, aren't, all, aren't all words British? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so it's Automaton. Let's Automaton. Call it, let's call okay. it that. All right, cool. so, yeah, but map number four is obviously a well-known map. All these players have played tons of games on this, but the other maps, Port Alexander and, and, and Automaton, are, are fairly new, and I don't think either player has, well, Marshman play, plays a lot, a lot of games, so maybe he's played a bunch on it, but I don't think Thermal has. Um... I also don't know, we don't know the picks, but Stasis and Parasite were vetoed for obvious reasons. Uh, so, I, but I honestly don't think we're going to we're gonna go to a game five, right? I don't think so, no. It's very possible. I mean, the it can happen. The statistics don't lie, but at, th at the same time, you know, <laughs> Marsman is like, he's playing dominant. He beat Jorgs very confidently uh, as well. And Euthermal is not feeling that great about his TVP. Um, we're going to see a, a fairly fast expand from your thermal as is standard for Terran players in this uh, meta. He's going to lose his Reaper. He'll lose his Reaper. Bit unfortunate, but now the Stargate's going to go up after he loses the Reaper. I'm not going to be able to see that. Um, Do you think it's going to be Phoenix play or Oracle play? Uh, that's a good one. I think he might open Oracle. Yeah. I uh, think so too. I don't like uh, Phoenixes don't really work the same as in ZVP, right? You can't, like, building one or two is not going to do as much as yeah. it. Like, you need to commit to it way more. So oracles. So no Roddy plays. <laughs> yeah, no Roddy plays. Or he could go for Tempest and actually surprise everyone because he's yeah. he's not done that before. That's also not really the map for it. Gonna go full Mela. So yeah, so, but I <laughs> like I doubt he's gonna go for it. Mela's actually the only Protoss player I've seen that like really tries to master that style so far. And Marsman's not that much of a fan. Um, if it's gonna be an Oracle, yep. and it flies into that Widowmind, that would be painful. And also a very good prediction by your thermal. <laughs> yes. Like, it, it, it's not necessarily... Okay, so you lose the Oracle. It's bad. It's really bad. But it, what's even worse is the feeling of yeah. losing the Oracle. You're like, uh... It's like, such a setback in your mind. That could have been, that could have been like, so avoided if I would just, like, move it, like, two that hex one to the right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, double gate coming up for Marshman. Fairly standard. Saturating his naturals. So is your thermal. Um... Not much to say, really. We get an engineering bay from Euthermal here. Again, he likes to get his upgrades a lot earlier than Jorks. Just a preference. He does. He generally does plays different. Uh, plays a different style in this matchup as well. So, three Widowmines now crossing the map, though. As is the Oracle. So we're gonna see some harassment from both sides. There's nothing there to actually deflect that Oracle. There are enough Marines with another position. Three Marines not gonna be enough for SCVs go down. But that drop. That drop can do something. Ooh. All right. That did more damage than the first game, for sure. Yeah, and he's not moving back his... Uh, he's finally moving back his probes. But, um, I mean, four against three, I guess that's that's a win That's a win for Marsman, right? I'm not sure if he lost the Oracle. I don't think he did. He some, yeah, it's circling around the base. He didn't even lose it. He got four kills, still has energy on him as well. This is much better for Marsman than it was yes. for Euthero. Oh, but placing that Widowmind there can be so annoying. Oh, that is, that's not nice. Nasty. But, I mean, he can still kill the Widowmind, right? Because it, 
they, they change the wind amount a little bit. You yeah. can't see it when it's burrowed, but you can see it when it's uh, when it's uh, when it's shot. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he's gonna keep it alive though. The probe's not gonna chase it, but the Phoenix are gonna try to find it, and they do. Blink again coming out of Marsman. Uh, I, th I feel like he likes this style a lot. He's getting three extra gates, obviously getting that third base up. Um, but it's kind of the same style he was playing the first game, and same from from your thermal. Both these players are just playing very their own style, like what they like. Yeah, a third Nexus on the way for Marsman. Yeah. No third yet on the way for your thermal. Do you think he's gonna stay two base for a while longer? I mean, Terran, Terrans generally stay for stay yeah. two base for a bit longer, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. Uh, there's no reason for him to all in, right? He he seems to be confident in, in himself enough that he's the better player, which he is on paper, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and with the experience as well, so I don't think there's any reason for him to make any do any ri take any risks. I think Marsman would be, would be more likely to do that. Then again, Ethermo is kind of a ballsy player that does uh, that did do a reap roll in against Scarlet like three or four times in a row. <laughs> you never know, really. He can do some cheeky plays. He yeah. likes it. <laughs> A Robo on the way for Marsman. Yep, Robo facility as is Charge Lot. So he's getting Blink and then also Charge right after each other. Uh, pretty expensive, but it is, I mean, it's seven minutes into the game, so. So what do you think? Probably gonna be Colossus, right? It's not very likely for Marsman to go into Disruptors. No, I don't think so. I, I don't think they're reliable enough. Um, but, it y but he is gonna get third now, Ethermal, while pushing, right? So he's following the very age-old tactic of like expanding whenever you're attacking, um, which for Terran historically <laughs> works very, very well. Uh, getting Labyrinth is now pretty much the same game as last time, except he's going way more for straight pushes. This is actually really going to get him oh. for uh, Marsman so far. He can't put Those four fields are helping a lot. Oh yeah, but I mean this is a lot of bio, and actually Marsman's supply is falling. Those Widow Mines are not have not all gone off yet. Widow mines are hurting right now. Oh my god, this was a really sharp timing from your thermal actually. Now looking at it, there's not that much here for Marsman. GG gets G called. GG! 2-0. 2 all for your thermal. Yep. That's gonna go to Marsman's head a bit. The same exact face that he had after game one. Unfaced. <laughs> oh boy. Yep. So game number three is gonna be gonna go on in just a just a moment. I, I mean, the thermal was like, oh no, Protoss is is, is you know I, I'm gonna have to play three uh, two Protoss players. How am I ever gonna get to the finals? Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, he was obviously joking around a little bit, but uh, uh, I mean, he's not <laughs> really looking that that uh, that unconfident there at all. He's looking <laughs> he's looking pretty dominant. I think yeah. so anyway. So next map is gonna be Port Alexander. Yep. New map for both players. Obviously, it's fairly big, uh, and uh, I mean, so so if Marsman wanted to cheese, it should have been in the other maps, not this one, I think, because Port Alexander is so big. Like the, the, the rush distance is so long, right? So, um, w but then again, you know, you can't really only think about that when mm. you're in a match like this. You're in the semifinals of a pretty big tournament. You can't really think about only the map because your opponent's also gonna think about the map. Like, okay. So, so you, you got to go a little bit deeper into the mind games. But I, I'm not sure. Marsman just doesn't seem like that much of a cheesy player right now in this matchup, especially he doesn't seem that, that confident in that kind of play style. Um, he might try the same thing again. I, I think he'll switch it up, though. What do you think? I think he'll f switch it up a bit. Yeah, with what? Like in the what? last two games, it didn't really work for him. So I think he might do something cheeky. I think maybe a proxy Stargate. Do you think he's going to cheese? I think he might try a proxy Stargate. Even though he is 2-0 down, I think he feels like he might need to to beat Euphoria. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, th I think so. I think or an all-in. I think in a straight-up game uh, where both players play their best or playing like a decent state, I think Euphoria wins. But Marsman is a god at all ins, though. Marsman has really got a really sharp timing. I mean, yeah. Agam's games were not very. <laughs> were not I mean, the most these games were the sharpest, but <laughs> he he's known for being very yeah. good at all ins. Yeah, he practices all sorts of builds a lot, including all ins, T like just timings, right? Not necessarily cheesy stuff, but timings. He's really, really good at timings. Uh, and we're going into the game, guys. We are going into the game. Get number three.
Game number three could be match point for the player in the bottom right, but the player in the top left corner of the map, playing for Blazer, it is Marsman, currently down 0-2. So wait, is it Blazer or is it Mcon? It's not Mcon. Yeah. It's one of the two it's guys. It's not Mcon. I, I don't know what, is, what Blazer stands for. Somebody told me it's Mcon. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, in the bottom right side <laughs> of this map, we have our red Terran player, Playing for Team Liquid is you Thermal! Wait, I thought that was Evos. Someone told me it oh, was Evos. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> Evos too. Can we have some oh who's guys? Oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> That was mediocre. <laughs> it was okay, guys. <laughs> All right, we see a probe going across the map. You might be right here with the, with the little... Uh, Cheeky stuff, or he's going for an early scout. I mean, we do see players. I think yeah. that answer is made pretty clear. Yeah. Now. I think that's pretty clear. Dude, we've seen so many proxies this tournament. Maybe oh it's because yeah. we don't see that many that's Zergs. But mainly because we've seen Mele. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I mean, Jorks as well. It's 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 like a lot of players like to proxy in this meta. Maybe it's because like the new meta is still so. Oh wait, it's a proxy gateway. That means it's gonna be a fairly quick push. Yes. He wants to finish it now. Do you think it's going to be... Oh, no, it's not going to be a Zealot. Because else he wouldn't have taken his robotics like that. I th Yeah, it's going to be Zealots. It is going to be Zealots. He just wants to have his... Uh, what? His uh, <laughs> tech. I don't What's know. Oh, yeah, his yeah, yeah. Uh, gateway tech. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he, he, he wants to go... Uh, I mean, he's not going to He's not gonna do a Korean 4 gate. That would be amazing. Oh, that would, would be amazing. That would be so sick. I've not seen a Korean Forget in so long, like 2012. Like, well, Wings of Liberty is the last time we saw a Korean Forget, I guess. I started playing this game with uh, the Korean Forget. <laughs> it's a disgusting build. It is disgusting. <laughs> so, we see uh, this is pretty much the build Mela played, though, uh, versus Jorks. Um, it is. Maybe also against the Thermal, I'm not sure, but the two Stalker, one Zella play, where you move out the Zella, then Chrono a Stalker on the, on the Forget gateway. You get two Stalkers and a Zella out at your opponent's base, like before three minutes. It's really, really good. Um, if your opponent doesn't expect it, uh, or if he reacts to it wrong, I mean, okay, so this is quite nice from your thermal as well. Putting down an engineering bay there, so that it can be um, a nexus placed for just a moment. Delaying his, his yeah. base from both sides, your thermal and Marsman are both delaying the opponent's bases. I know, and, and so far, no real damage has been. No oh, the stalker almost actually goes down. I didn't know it was that close, but I mean. I'm sure he saved it on time, on purpose there. Now he needs to let the shields heal a bit, though. And Youth Thermal has a bunker up right now, which yeah. is very good for him. There's no way he's going to get into the main, but at the same time, they've cancelled both each other's um, buildings for so long. And well, I mean, the Nexus hasn't really been cancelled, but it's been delayed. That I think it's kind of turned into an equal game right now, and now it really depends on who's going to tech out of it, because Mar uh, Thermal is already getting Cyclones. Getting a CC in the main base. Like, as a Terran player, you can do that. As a Protoss player, you can't. You can't, you can't fl float your Nexus up to your natural. It's not yeah. possible. Do you think it's going to be a Cyclone push, maybe? I, mean, I don't think so, but... I don't think so, because Marsman's been so aggressive, and he has so many Stalkers out. I think Mar uh, uh, Mark Uthermal might just want to play safe. He's taking his um, Starport right now, and a Stargate being made by Marsman. Yep, and that Stargate probably gonna be. It's a it's a late Stargate, so it's probably not gonna be an Oracle, right? I mean, so it's late, but everything is late this game, right? Because yeah. both players have to try to put on pressure. Or at least uh, you know, Marsman has, and Euthermals have to defend it. So, but we do see the double gate follow up as well. That's quite a lot of buildings off of one base. I don't know if Euthermal still doesn't know if the gateway is there. I don't think he does know. Um, he should definitely scout though. Oh, he, he does, does know. know. He okay. sees. But I think he's just unfazed by it right now. Yeah, he should definitely kill it because it's a really easy way for the Protoss to warp our units very close. Uh, and he is now because he feels safe enough. Two Cyclones and a bunch of Marines going to kill that off. Oracle actually coming out now. So, I mean, if the Oracle was just a little bit earlier, it could have sneaked in and gotten a couple kills. And but it's indeed an Oracle. Yep. And a fake Phoenix. A fake Phoenix. A Phoenix being pushed out to scout and mind game Mr. Yep. Thermy um, oh, so he sees. far yeah he sees everything but 
that's an empty medevac, right? Well, but it's it's a push because he saw the cyclones. Well, one of the cyclones, so he knows it's probably a push, right? Oh, did he see the cyclone as well? He okay, saw one okay. of the cyclones. All right. Well, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna have to see what he does now, though, because it's it's not that big of an army. There's a lot of stalkers, but the cyclones are fairly dangerous. A third one's on the way now as well. One goes out immediately. A second one falters very very soon. Very well. Actually, this is a friend. really good push. This is very well done by your thermal. And it's looking really good. Yeah. Great micro. GG, good luck. I mean, that was that third game went over so fast. Like, did you see the Oracle flying into the turret? Like, Marshman couldn't handle all the pressure at all, all, all the spots. Your like, Thermal is just so dominant. Yeah, that third game, he had him completely. Uh, in the end, though, because beforehand, it didn't look that, uh, that, that amazing for him or anything. But, like, in the end, with the three Cyclone push, I think we <laughs> were all underestimating Cyclones a little bit. Uh, but it was a crazy, crazy push in the it's end. It's going to be a fun finals. I think so.